Hey, this is Geo Techland, and today I'll be taking a look at the PinePhone Beta Edition, which comes pre-installed with Manjaro's Plasma. Many users in the Linux community were surprised that this came pre-installed with Plasma, especially since most of the previous community editions of the PinePhone came pre-installed with Fosh. I've already covered KDE's Plasma in a previous video, but I wanted to take another look at it and see what's improved and what's been updated. So let's take a look. If you're enjoying my content, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, and follow me on Odyssey. You can also support me on LiberaPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below. The PinePhone comes in two flavors. You can get the standard beta edition for $150, and that comes with two gigabytes of RAM. Or you can opt for the beta edition with convergence package with three gigabytes of RAM. As you can see, you have quite a few number of apps pre-installed. Angelfish is the web browser. Buho is the gallery app manager. Then of course, you've got the standard calendar, contacts, file manager. You've also got a clock and a software center, phone and messaging apps. All of these apps are pre-installed except for this Telegram app that I installed afterwards, which we'll take a look at in a moment. When you swipe down from the top right here you'll pull down the notifications uh, and settings area very reminiscent of what you see on android you can adjust the brightness you'll see you have access to a flashlight you'll see that you can set the phone to night mode which will remove the blue light auto rotate works fine when it comes to performance navigating certain apps like the settings app works perfectly fine and is fairly smooth but of course, due to not having GPU acceleration on the browser, which is the case for pretty much every mobile Linux distro, you still have issues with latency. You also still have issues opening apps. So if we take a look at the Angelfish app, I open it up and it takes a few seconds to actually load. And in general, browsing through the web won't be as smooth as it could be. But again, that's just due to not having GPU acceleration on the browsers here. You can watch videos as long as they're not above 720p and the sound on the PinePhone sounds really good. And speaking of sound, calling on the PinePhone works pretty good. I'm able to take and receive calls and the audio sounds good, especially if I put it up to my ear. I can hear the other user perfectly fine. Although it seems like the speaker button doesn't work here. When I press on it, it doesn't do anything or make it loud enough to capture the sound in the recording here. The camera app looks like it's in good shape. You now have the rear camera and the front facing camera working pretty good now. Although the rear camera looks like it has some issues with my lighting here, but otherwise it takes good images. Next up, you have the software center. And this software center, it is a little bit sparse with apps, but I'm actually glad that they've only included apps to download that are designed for Plasma Mobile here, just so you don't accidentally install a bunch of apps that don't work properly. And one popular app that works perfectly fine here is Telegram. Telegram works just as you'd expect on something like Android. So that's good if this is one of your favorite apps. And of course, with KDE, you get a lot of customization. So here in the settings, you can change the theme to a dark mode and you can change the icon set and many other settings here. And I would say that overall, Plasma Mobile provides a very good experience, a very familiar Android look and feel. And I think the major areas of improvement are gonna be with performance and opening apps which is going to get better and better with every edition of the software and the hardware. I think KDE's Plasma Edition has made some significant progress in the last few months. And while I still don't think it's as fast and smooth as Fosh or Ubuntu Touch's Lomiri, I think it matches more the look and feel of something like Android, which I think it's a plus. But let me know your thoughts. Do you see yourself using KDE's Plasma Edition? 
or do you prefer Fosh or Lomiri? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time.